Hi there, I'm Robert Osborne. Sunday nights around midnight are usually devoted to silent films here on TCM, but this week we're going to be spending the entire evening in celebration of silent films. We're going to bring you right now some mysterious and legendary pieces of film history, all newly restored and looking really great. It's a series from the earliest days of filmmaking called Les Vampires. And that title is misleading because the series has nothing to do with vampires. As the name Les Vampires would suggest, though, it is spooky and it is French. And we think you'll agree that it's absolutely fascinating to watch. Les Vampires had its individual episodes released between November of 1915 and June of 1916. There are a total of 10 of these episodes, all of which we're going to show you right now. Les Vampires was conceived as a low-budget crime series for the booming mass movie market in France at the time. All the films were shot on the streets and back alleys of Paris while World War I was being fought. The plots are sometimes choppy, even surreal, revolving around the adventures of a crusading reporter who's chasing after a gang of criminals called Les Vampires. These films are artful, they're deliberately primitive, and the impact they had was immense. Now they've taken on a whole new lifespan in the 90s, so much so that the series recently inspired a long-running off-Broadway show called The Mystery of Irma Vep. But here, newly restored by David Shepard and looking better than they have in 80-some years, the first four episodes of Les Vampires. Paris, 1915. Around every corner, behind every door, creeps a bizarre world of secrets and lies. They are everywhere. They are everyone. Les Vampires. The fully restored legendary serial that held audiences spellbound in 1915 will captivate you today. Louis Foyard's Les Vampires. The mystery continues next. Beware, the truth is in the shadows. Only on Turner Classic Movies. Hi, I'm Robert Osborne here in the middle of the tantalizing, creepy, and incredible French film series Les Vampires. We've just shown episodes one through four, and now we're moving on to episodes five and six. And if you missed any of the first group, don't fret you'll have no trouble figuring out what's going on. That's the great thing about almost all movie serials. Although they were part of a continuing story, each episode usually came complete as a story into itself. Now, the overall storyline in the series that we're bringing you now is about a gang of criminals known as Les Vampires. But these films are less about story and much more about mood and atmosphere. And it's that mood and atmosphere that's earned Les Vampires its reputation as one of the true milestones of French cinema. The 10 episodes of Les Vampires were made in the silent screen days of 1915 and 1916, in the midst of World War I. The French studios were suffering, as they still are today, as a matter of fact, from competition from foreign films, particularly the popular American serials of 1915, like Perils of Pauline and the exploits of Elaine. Les Vampires was produced to compete with those outside serials, and they did very well indeed. And today, why they're far more novel and interesting to watch than those old serials that they once competed with. So join us now as we indulge in episodes five and six of Les Vampires, newly restored by David Shepard. France, 1915. A nation in disarray. Paris, paralyzed by the danger and the threat of the First World War. Cinema represents an escape, an alternative, a way to cope with the crisis. In these desperate, paranoid days, a piece of motion picture history takes shape. A series of films so unique, so mysterious, that they seem to evoke an alternative world. A secret world. The world of Les Vampires. Les Vampires is a serial film in 10 episodes. It competes with other serials from the United States, such as The Perils of Pauline. But Les Vampires is different. Its very nature is subversive. The story of Les Vampires is essentially the story of a great chase. 
The pursuer is Philippe Garand, who is an investigative reporter. He is attempting to track down a gang of master criminals called the Vampires. The Vampires are not vampires in the sense that they, they creep up on sleeping people and suck their blood. Rather, they creep up on society and suck their blood. But they're kind of Robin Hood criminals. They only rob the people who seem to be deserving victims anyway. A criminal gang, a secret society, lurking beneath the surface of everyday life. Clad in skin-tight black, they haunt wartime Paris. Leading the lives of regular citizens, they infiltrate both the neighborhoods and the subconscious of an audience living under siege. What is so striking in Les Vampires is that it was shot and released during the First World War in 1915-1916. The film tries to convey a documentary-like quality, like there is the use of specific streets and specific buildings. And we see in the movie, all the windows are closed and the streets are empty it's because people were asked to stay home. And suddenly on the screen, you see the vampire invading their most intimate uh, environment. That's what makes it so dramatic because they are among us. The murderers are among us. These vampires are the vision of the director Louis Foyard, France's grandmaster of the serial film. Now we can see this vision as Foyard himself conceived it. Film historian David Shepard has restored the original color tints, corrected the film speed, recorded a new musical score, and with French scholar Fabrice Zagory produced new title cards. This restoration brings Fouillard's method into sharp focus, a method that is deceptively simple. His scenes present ordinary life, people in ordinary conversation. Fouillard shoots Les Vampires in classical, theatrical style, the players facing the camera. That's not because Fouillard was incapable of breaking a scene down into separate shots. He was making a deliberate choice to work in this style of long takes and redirecting the viewer's attention within the takes. Fouillard felt that the audience would watch the actors, would be directed by their gesture and attention and would have the privilege of exploring space within the frame, very much as if they were witnessing the actual event and make the fantastic events which were included in his shots more believable simply because there was no possibility for camera trickery within them. It is inside Louis Fouillard's logical and orderly time and space that Les Vampires explodes into the surreal. Episode 1. Philippe Goran, hot on the trail of the vampires, finds a secret passageway in his bedroom. Inside it, a locked box. Inside the box, the head of a missing police inspector. Episode 6. Irma Vep, the dark heroine of the vampire gang, is seduced and hypnotized by a rival gang leader. At his command, Irma Vep shoots and kills her own leader, the Grand Vampire. Of course, it's a vicarious thrill to participate in the life of this fantastically successful and resourceful underworld gang. Watching a scene such as the vampire creeping across the rooftop with the cathedral in the background, these are moments of kind of inexplicable beauty. When we watch a film, we are always divided as a spectator. We believe what we see on the screen, yet we don't. And the whole structure of the film plays on that. We have this bourgeois world and at the same time, we have the vampire which disrupt this bourgeois world. So this whole film, The Vampire, is about cinema itself as a medium. This is why it's so timeless, because it plays on what we are as a spectator. In the world of Les Vampires, appearances cannot be trusted. The audience learns with each episode to suspend the rules of reality 
And over time, Louis Foyard's fantasy becomes a landmark in French cinema. Intoxicating, addictive, Les Vampires. Hi, I'm Robert Osborne. It's time to return to the exotic world of Les Vampires, the legendary French film series we've been presenting all night. And right now we're going to continue with episodes seven and eight. And I have to say, don't go away if you've missed the first six episodes. You can start right here. And I promise you, you won't be confused or in the dark about what's happened so far. Each episode of Les Vampires is designed to stand on its own, partially because that's just good storytelling, but also because no one knew from production to production whether or not they'd be making another installment. This was, don't forget, 1915 and 1916 and France was fully involved in the First World War. Also, the studio behind Les Vampires was on very shaky financial ground. Plus, there were problems hanging onto the cast and crew members who were constantly having to come and go because of emergencies caused by the war. So characters sometimes had to be killed off or written out just because the actors who played them were no longer available. Well, all these complications in the end helped make Les Vampires the bizarre classic it has become. So join us now for some film history and for some silent movie magic, newly restored and in the best conditions since first shown in France in 1915 and 1916. Here are episodes seven and eight of Les Vampires. Paris, 1915. Around every corner, behind every door, creeps a bizarre world of secrets and lies. They are everywhere. They are everyone. Les Vampires. The mystery continues next on Turner Classic Movies. Hi there, I'm Robert Osborne. I'm here to invite you one last time into the netherworld of Les Vampires as part of our silent Sunday night on TCM. We're about to see episodes 9 and 10 of this somewhat mythical silent film series from France. And in these episodes, you'll see some of the most bizarre and most engrossing events yet in this legendary tale of the French underworld. First, to review the basics, Les Vampires is not about vampires as we normally think of them in the Dracula sense. There's no drinking of blood, nobody with fangs. The vampires in this story are a French criminal gang operating in and around Paris in the midst of World War I. And the focus is on a reporter named Philippe, who's in pursuit of the gang. Now, never mind if you haven't seen the preceding episodes of this series. Each chapter does stand on its own. Each is at once realistic and surreal. All you really need to know is that a new head vampire named Venomous is about to wage war against the hero, Philippe. Everything else is explained in the title cards thanks to a wonderful new restoration of the scenes by historian David Shepard. Here's the dramatic and wild conclusion, the final two episodes of Les Vampires. 